Michael Knowles joins us now. Michael, thanks a lot uh, for coming on. I'm really struck by the statement from the moron who runs that school who says that you're against diversity, but it seems like you're arguing for diversity, the diversity of the sexes, or am I missing something? What are you arguing? The lecture itself is arguing for diversity of thought on campuses. That's the very reason that I was invited to give this lecture. Chancellor Agrawal is a disgrace to higher education. That's for I woke sure. up this morning expecting an apology for being assaulted during a lecture that I was invited to give at the University of Missouri. Instead, I was smeared baselessly as a bigot. They referred to my claim that men are not women as an extreme viewpoint, and they tacitly are permitting political violence to fester on campus. The message here is very clear. When that person assaulted me last night, we didn't know what it was. I initially thought it was paint. I was told by many people in the room that it was bleach. They later discovered that it was a non-toxic chemical that merely looked and smelled like a toxic chemical. That point doesn't matter. What matters is the message that they were sending. This was a warning shot to conservatives on colleges around the country that if you don't shut up, if you don't kowtow to leftist orthodoxy, you will be bullied, you will be shouted down, you will be physically intimidated, and maybe next time that substance will be a little more dangerous, a little more toxic. It is fascism as clear as fascism can be, and the university abandoned every one of its conservative students, and it encouraged the agitators, and it encouraged the violence. Uh, and we're really complicit in this for fun. I and mean, this is a publicly funded university that takes tax dollars, our tax dollars, and we don't say anything about it. And we, we, should, shut, we should shut it down immediately, um, I would say. But I would also argue that it's not just a conservative viewpoint. I mean, there are many feminists who would like to preserve acknowledgement of the biological difference between men and women. There are apolitical biologists who just take it as a matter of, of obvious fact that what you said is true. Did you say something well, that we're is, not of aware of? Irony. Well, this is the irony. If they had let me give my lecture last night, I would have made this very point. When you say that there is no difference between men and women, this very fashionable idea that has come into the public consciousness in the last five minutes, you erase the category of women. You erase the category of women's sports. You erase these categories that are very important to our civilization. Now, why did they scream? Why did they shout from the very beginning, the very first sentence of my lecture? They shouted me down. Eventually, they tried to physically assault me. It's because they have no argument. They have right. no way to win in the battle of ideas, so they're going to bully every person who does not agree with their ridiculous ideological fantasies. And we need to fight back. I was asked if I'm going to cancel the rest of my speaking tour. The college speaking tour just got 10 campuses longer. We are not going to let them bully us. Good. We are not going to let them intimidate us, even if the universities abandon every one of its conservative students. So, I mean, you're basically taking the Galileo position here. You're arguing for science in the face of a hysterical mob that wants to hurt you for saying it. I may as well have given the lecture that the sky is blue. I have given many campus speeches. I thought this one would be the most innocuous. I thought this would be the driest. It's a fact as plain as day. It's a scientific fact. It is a social fact that men are different from women. But on these campuses now, where the students have been totally disserved by their parents, raised them without any manners, and by their educators who raised them without any education. Yeah. They now will not tolerate any plain-spoken, common-sense viewpoints, and they refuse to learn. They refuse to listen. All they will do is use the heckler's veto, and when it comes down to it, they'll get violent, and they will threaten you with substances. They will threaten you with chemicals, yeah. and they will shut you up. We should, we should shut these places down. They're, they're, they're wrecking the country. Michael, thank you very much. I hope you keep going. Thanks for having me, Tucker.